We're just a few weeks away from the biggest event in 2024, the Masters. But before that, it's the Texas, mini Texas swing. A couple of weeks, Houston Open, then the Valero Texas Open next week. And then the Masters. How's it going, Jared? Good, yeah. I, I just hope that, like, Scotty Scheffler doesn't make the Masters a, a snooze fest on Sunday. That's kind of what I'm worried about at this point. <laughs> well, that's why I've already taken precautions. I've already started parlays. <laughs> Yeah. I, I did a uh, I did a parlay with uh, uh, with a couple of college basketball teams to win the championship, and I parlayed it go. with Scheffler to win the Masters. I figured, no, I mean, why I, not? I, I say that, yeah, I mean, I, I I I say that mostly jokingly, honestly, because I think even this week, I think we're at the point where he's become overvalued, and you know, f- famous last words, he could easily win again, but like, I don't think he should be plus two fifty or plus three hundred. Like, I mean. A month ago, we were saying, why can't Scotty Shuffler win? This guy's yeah. really good, but he can't win. Well, and we now, knew what would happen if he started winning now. Yeah, and and the putting has come around, so there's reasons for it. But I don't I, – I think he's a bit overvalued here. I think he'll end up – I think he'll definitely end up overvalued for the Masters when the field is as strong as we see all, all year, right, when, factoring in the live guys now. So I, I actually like it because I think it's going to get us better numbers on other guys. And of course, True. you know, Shuffler's going to end up winning, so it's not going to matter. But it'll it'll feel good when we get when we get uh, you know some some nice numbers on some of these other guys. Yeah, let's yeah. Uh, let me see what do we got right now for the what Masters? is it now for the Masters four let's to one pop up where the hell is the thing here? There it is. Okay, so yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah I believe so. Four, yeah, four to one. Four fifty. And the next guy, as usual, is McElroy. There's Rom though, because we are getting the live boys in. Uh, yeah, see that. See, even like like Rom at twelve to one. I think you know. Yeah, I would not sure. I'd better right now, but I think that's that's. Nah, I don't think that would go down nice much further. I can. I could, yeah. I guess. But the thing is, Rom hasn't won yet over in Live. So yeah, and that's that's a tricky part. We talked about it last year, trying to figure out these Live guys and you know the the, the form they're in. We don't have stats still from Live, which makes it tough. It's too, um, it's too late on Zalatoris. Way too late. He's now eighteen uh, yeah. to one. Hopefully, hopefully, you, hopefully, you got in when we told you to. Yep. Same thing with Neiman. We, we got Neiman and Del Torres big odds. Forget that now. Cam uh, Smith sticks out. Cam Smith sticks out to me. Yeah. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight to one. Nice. Wind, Wyndham Clark's the guy. And you know, not He's, to get too yeah. much into Masters talk here. Like we, we could go an hour just on Masters, but um, Wyndham Clark is a guy. We. we we talk about it. You you need guys in form coming into the Masters, right? It's rare that a guy wins when he hasn't been playing well. Who's playing better right now besides Scotty Shuffler than Wyndham Clark? Yeah, maybe no one. Now he's never played here, but he's never. This is his first Masters appearance. Yeah, that's and the trick. Is it, is it like? I I know it's Fuzzy Zeller. Was it like some sometime in the 1980s? Was it the, the last guy to win at his first appearance? It, it here? was quite a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. So like Clark is a guy. I'm going to be going back and forth on for the next two weeks, whether or not he, he should be a better or not. Cause it's a, it's a good course for him too, right? You want you would think. long hitters. Yeah. You want long hitters. He has the short game. Um, so he should do well. I think he'll play well. Um, whether he can win at his first appearances is, is the question. And again, at least you're getting 28 to one. So that's important. And by mm-hmm. the way, Scotty Scheffler just uh, with his win at the players, he, he got rid of one of those trends. So right. maybe it's time for another first time Masters champ in their inaugural appearance. Um, mm-hmm. Jason Day, by the way, is a very good player at the Masters, and he's getting 40 to 1. Cameron yeah. Young, you would think Cam <laughs> Young's game should also be pretty good at Augusta, and he's 40 to 1. Yeah, we, I mean, we can get into Cam if we want to. Uh, recap the, the Valspar. Um, sure. So hit the Gals guy. I bet it, I think, 60 to 1 about a week ago. He's still 55. I like that. The other guy that you scrolled past already is Colin Morikawa at 35 to 1, who has had success at Augusta. Um, obviously not in good form right now. I yeah. Is he playing Is he playing next week? Cause like I, I couldn't bet him at Augusta if he doesn't play next week. Now, if he, if he plays next week and shows signs of life, um, I think Morikawa at 35 is, is interesting. Uh, let me see. Not, yeah, I'm not sure if the field's out for next week yet. Yeah, they should have some of the they I, they should have some of the some of the uh, participants. 
so I'll check that. Fantasy National. Fantasy National has a cool tool now where you can see where guys are committed. Oh, uh, Morikawa was committed okay. for next week. So, you know, so, it's... But... So that's that'll be one to keep a close eye on. If he, yeah, he just yeah, you want him out, to be in the top ten. Yeah, or for me, you know, because I don't want to miss the thirty-five. If he comes out the first round or two and just scores well, puts up good um, stats, that could be one to jump on. Because you know, he Morikawa could drop to twenty-two to one pretty quickly if he plays well next week. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll definitely uh, give uh, viewers. A little bit more of a idea of what we're going to be doing next week uh, on the Masters for sure. So we'll add that as part of our uh, coverage next week. Um, because again, you also always have to go with. There's always going to be a vet, some 45 year old or someone in their low 40s or even in their high 40s is going to contend. It happens almost every year at the Masters. So you know you're going to. So that's you got to get the right guy. But there yeah. are going to be some, you know, players to keep well, an eye on. Right. Augusta is the number one course history course, you know, the, the most predictive. So, yep. so again, for me, for me, I think we mentioned this on our majors preview show, but Augusta to me is less about the stats and course fit. It's about one who's played well here in the past and two who's playing well coming in. And if you, if you, if you can find someone who kind of checks both those boxes, that that's someone who, I want to have my money on. Yeah. Uh, so, get, so getting to Cameron Young. Uh, <laughs> look, all right. He did. He. I, I thought he had like a bad hole, one bad hole. But I don't. I. I I'm not sure he was going to be able to beat Malnati. I think Malnati was just. You know, Which is crazy to say. Yeah. I just. <laughs> you know. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I- so yeah. I don't I don't blame Cam. It wasn't like Cam Young needed a shot, and if he got the shot, he was in a playoff. Or if he did this, you know, he was he was still, you know. I mean, yes, did maybe did it help Malnati? To, I don't know if I get maybe he knew before his mm-hmm. approach that Young had bogeyed and made life yeah. easier for him. Okay, but I don't know. I mean, Malnati was just playing lights out late. So yeah, no, I agree. I was going to say I think that this. That, that was as well as I've seen Cam Young play in yeah. contention down the stretch on a Sunday in, in a while. Maybe not ever. I'd have to go back and think about every time he's been in the mix. But in a while, I, he didn't do anything to lose that. Um, yeah, tough he, golf you know, course. Tough golf course. It's not course like he was at 20 he, under par and had a bad lag part. Yeah. Then you can go, oh, yeah. come on, what are you doing? That's a tough no, golf no, he, course. He, yeah, he hit it well down the stretch. He made some you know, 8 to 12 footers. Down the stretch, which he hasn't yeah, he done did. in the past. Um, yep. you know, he just got beat by Pre- Peter freaking Malnati, which is crazy, crazy to say. Good for Peter Malnati. His uh, last three hundred to one. He was like he was like three hundred to one, three fifty to one. I something was insane. he okay? He's he's yeah. Scheffler's trying to shrink those odds, those average odds, <laughs> and Peter Malnati's like I, I will have none of that. <laughs> so the odds uh, definitely jerk back up once again, thanks to yeah. Peter Monati. But look, a lot's going to depend because this is not a signature event. So matter of fact, is this the first event Sheffield's played this year that wasn't a big event? Might have been. Um, well, wait, waste management officially. Oh, that's right. Phoenix. Yeah. Signature, but I mean, that, that might be it. That might be it though. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. And that, yeah. And, and he's usually really good there. And right. it looked like he was going to win again, but yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll see. Because yeah, I mean, when his odds, let's take a look at his odds now. So let's see what they are. I think they are ridiculously low. Yep, look at that. I mean, that's just crazy. Two sixty. That's like almost Tiger Woods territory in his heyday. Um, yeah, that's uh for. <laughs> No, I can't. No way am I putting money on a golfer at less than three to one. <laughs> not going to happen. I know the field makes it a lot easier because he's not going up against the best players in the world. So that will make it definitely more. But look, look what happened last week. It, it just doesn't matter. Even though the best players in the world aren't going to be here, the Peter Malnati's of the world can just have a really hot <laughs> week and it just doesn't matter. Yeah. So, um, and it's going to be kind of hard to think, not that he couldn't do it, but it's going to be kind of hard to think that Scotty Scheffler will will, will will win three in a row, looking for four in a row at the Masters. That's 
That's is he, some uncharted territory. I I assume he's not playing next week. That would be a good guess. I can tell you. I, I don't think he, no one. way he's playing next week, right? Play in one second. He is not playing next week. So yeah. This is his last last. Yeah, and and be, by the way, he hasn't he, won here. So it's not like he's got a great resume here, which is which is also right. kind of interesting. You know, he only yeah, has one top five out of four. Okay, yeah, I mean he's come, he's come second and ninth the past two. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, like you said, it's it's a weak field. Ta- Texas course, he's from Texas. It's a tougher golf course that kind of elevates the, the good ball it striking. Is. So, it is. I mean, it's you know, I don't think I don't think plus two sixty is far off. I might make him you know plus three fifty plus four hundred. Like he's the massive massive favorite. It's just not 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 bettable for me how I how I bet golf. Well, I mean, even just the average uh, gambler, I just don't think it makes a lot of sense. Yep. So, and, and and you're right. I mean, I said it's important to note. You might think, well, it's going to be one of those 20 under par. No, it's not. The both Texas events, both of these golf mm-hmm. courses are, are okay. They're not super hard and they're not super easy. So they're normal. They're normal PGA yeah. Tour golf courses. So that's a good thing. Um, this this course this is interesting. This course was redesigned in 2019, and Brooks Kepka was part of the redesign team. Okay. And you think like you know, if Brooks is designing a course, what would he make it? He'd make it long, which this course is. It's you know, it's a par 71, but it's over 7,400 yards. Um, and it, yeah, it's just it's it's not it's not the toughest course. It's probably not even tough as tough as last week, uh, but it's definitely not an easy course, and it is going to reward the ball strikers. I think around the green is going to be important here, so. Um, it, it's yeah, it, it 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 plays like a course you'd expect Brooks Kepka to help design. I think. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to let's see. Uh, oh, and and just keep in mind too the golf course because there is a a little bit of interesting history if you're not if you don't pay attention enough uh, regarding how this has worked over at this event, which has by the way been a PGA Tour event dating back to 1946. Uh, but they've been on different golf courses. They've been on different times of year. So you have a situation where uh, this is going to be the first time that they're playing at Municipal Golf Course Memorial Park in March. So uh, now I don't know what kind of a difference that's going to be compared to, uh, you know, obviously in the fall. Uh, we talked about how Florida is a big difference, seasonal changes like that. Um, I would I guess it'd be a little bit of a difference, um, but we'll find out for, for sure this time around. And there really aren't a whole lot of trends to, 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 to keep an eye on because they've only been here four times. So, um, and two of the winners were first time winners. Obviously the first winner here was first time winner, but, uh, Kokrak, uh, won his first ever, um, actually, you know what, uh, now that I'm uh, thinking about it, it was, uh, as far as uh, maiden winners, there were two of them. Griffin, who won the first event in 2019 here uh, at Memorial Park, and Ortiz. Uh, it's too bad Carlos Ortiz isn't here. I'm not sure what's up with Carlos Ortiz because he's really good at this golf course. But He's on live, isn't he? Oh, is that that's probably why. There you go. Yeah, so you got, you got two, you know, the, Ortiz and Kokrak. Uh, yep. Two of the last two winners it. are on live now. Yep. So Kokrak uh, uh, won here. And, and and it's interesting that um, the rankings have actually steadily gotten more uh, more have been better regarding the player talent had been better each year. Because Griffin won when he was the 176th player. Uh, Finau won last year was the 15th. So we have seen a steady uh, uptick as far as uh, rankings uh, overall. But there's just not a lot of trends to go on as far as stats. Let's take a look at what you have here. So we're going to pop them up here. The top 10 in course history over the last three years right there in the red, in the blue. Uh, the top 10 strokes gained on difficult courses over the last 12 months. And then we're going to pop up the third one back in the red. Top 10 strokes gained in Texas over the last three years. So talk about why you picked, well, the last one was obvious, but talk about the one in the middle. 
Yeah, so again, I think, I mean, you, you look at the winning scores here, you know, Finau did win at 16 under, but Kokrak was 10 under, Ortiz was 13 under. I know the average score around here is about even par. So it is, you know, on the difficult side of, of courses on the PGA Tour. Again, it's it's long. The, the one thing I did read about the course so far this week, you know, comparing it to this time of year versus when they, you know, played in, in October or November, it sounds like the rough is going to be down versus where it was in the fall. I think, you know, just the growing season in texas just hasn't it hasn't had as much time to grow out so i do think the rough's going to be okay um, not as not as punishing as it was in the fall so maybe it does play a bit easier but i, I do still think factoring in um, how these guys play on tougher golf courses makes sense so you, you obviously have Scheffler and Wyndham clark leading there jason day makes sense i think he's someone to definitely consider um as a bat and, and as a one and done play this week um some of the who's that some of the longer uh, jason day Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Who, uh, who also shows up third on our strokes gain in, in Texas list. Um, he's played well in Texas. Um, you know, Ryan Fox, someone who shows up on, on tough golf courses. Um, Siwoo Kim is someone I, I looked at as a bet this week. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's worth factoring in probably as much, if not more than course history this week. Cause I, I do think one with course history, it's just, it's just the last three years that I looked at. And two, again, the fact that it's, we're playing it in a completely different time of the year. I'm not sure how predictive the course history is going to be for this week. Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, out of the top 10 strokes gained on difficult courses last 12 months out of the 10, uh, five of those are in our picks. Perfect. So um, Perfect. hopefully that'll help us out. I mean, look, it, it won't help us out, uh, if, uh, if, uh, like a Peter Malnati wins, but, uh, nothing we can do about yeah. that. So, but it does help. Okay. So there you go. Those are the, some of the key stats. As a matter of fact, I'll just pop up the picks so everybody can see them right there. There's Jared. Jared has three picks. I have five. So we have eight total picks this week. Okay, so, and look, I think there are, <clears throat> it's because you only have a few superstars here, it does open up a much bigger opportunity that there will be another, especially in a long shot season, that will have a long shot win this week. So that is definitely, uh, and that's why there are a lot of players that I think are worth, hey, throw a buck, throw a buck on six or seven guys. And look, we talked about that last week. And, 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 and even though we didn't pick the right player, once again, somebody at Valspar with a high ranking won an event. So mm -hmm. it's just you, you can get all the stats and trends to work your way in the world, but it doesn't mean you're going to pick the right guy. But we'll still try to do the best we can at it. So, um, yeah, so we know about Scheffler. Now we got the next two, actually the next three players we all have. So that's tipped you off on who I'm picking. So I'm taking Wyndham Clark, uh, and I'm basically just taking him. I'm putting, uh, I'm just putting a little bit of money on him. Um, but I, I just like the way that he's trending here. He's gotten better each time, including his five under par 16th place finish last year. I think that's nice considering he doesn't have a whole lot of experience in a lot of different golf courses like that. So I think that's something I want to take advantage of. And, he, and again, we know how hot he is. And I think it mm -hmm. would be, now, look, he did win at Pebble, so it's not like he hasn't won this year. But, you know, it wasn't a four-round win. Um, but I still think it would be nice for him, and I'm sure he would really like to get another win heading into major season. But anyway, I just like him on the golf course, um, yeah. which is why I'm going to go ahead and take him. And the other thing is, is I got Scheffler at th two or three to one, and I've got Clark, right. who's now 12, or he was 14 to one. It's like, that's a big difference. That's why I was like, wow, you know, I can get window Because I actually thought Wyndham Clark could have been like eight, eight to one, to tell you the <laughs> truth. So I was yeah, like, I, I was at 14 to one. I grabbed him like that. I was like, yeah, I got to take him. And the same way that you might think about Sef Scheffler, I was thinking about Clark, where I was like, well, I'm getting 14 to one. This is a weak field. Why wouldn't I take him? So that's why I decided to... And I, I put 50 bucks on him. I said, why not? I got him at 14 to one. Yeah. I mean, the clear second best player in this field. Again, if we look at strokes gain total over the last three months, it's Scheffler, number one, it's Wyndham Clark, number two. I'm with you. I don't think their odds should be this far apart. I mean, go back to the players. They were separated by three millimeters, right? Yeah. If Clark's, Clark's putt is, you know, three millimeters to the right. They're going into a playoff. This is a long driver heavy golf course. I know he won at Pebble, Clark did, which was a surprise, but 
you ideally want him on, you know, long driver, heavy golf courses. So it should be a really good fit for him. And look, uh, Scotty has won a couple of big events. He's made a lot of money. Uh, he goes away for a week. Let's remember his wife is going to give birth in about a month or two. So, you know, there's potential distractions when you, because, you know, you go back to back, you know, you, you, there's, that's all you're focused on. You go from one event to the other. Now you stay, you go away. So maybe, I'm sure Scotty's got bigger things on his mind than winning the Houston Open. Let's just put it that way. He's got the Masters so. coming up in a few weeks. Yeah, we hope so. I, I hope so. Yeah. So, uh, but you have the Gala and Zalatoris mm -hmm. as two of your three picks. Uh, this will be the first time for Zalatoris coming off the miscut at players. And the Gala uh, mm. had a big difference from his first to his second appearance. Uh, he was seven over par in his first appearance when he finished 61st in 2022. And I don't want to get into the whole year season thing because it's kind of screwed mm -hmm. up. It'll screw up your mind if you think about it in Houston because of the wraparound. Uh, but yep. the Gala uh, improved from 61st to 22nd from seven over par to four under par. So that's 11 stroke difference from his first appearance here to his second. And he, in his last appearance here, he closed with a 64, which I believe was, was the best round of the day. So he should have some good vibes coming into this event. I think he even lives um, in the Houston area now. Um, and yeah, I went with these two guys cause I, I know it's been a season of long shots and I know that it's a pretty, um, you know, weak, thin field at the top. So maybe a long shot wins again. I just think if Scheffler, brings even like his C game, as long as he doesn't bomb in order to beat him, like it's going to have to be one of these other like guys in the next tier. Like I think, you know, if, if Sahith or will play their a game and Scheffler plays his B minus game, like these, these guys can beat Scotty Scheffler. So yeah, Sahith. So again, talking about strokes game total over the last three months, it's Scheffler one, Wyndham Clark two, Sahith Tagala is number three in this field. Um, top tens at waste management API and the players he has, we talked about this last year, I think. So hit Tagala's weakness being off the tee, just spraying it too much. And he's still doing it on occasion. And that's kind of what's cost him a chance to win some of these tournaments is he's, he's making too many like double bogeys because he, he gets wild off the tee, but still in general, he's really improved his off the tee game. He was 134th last year in strokes gain off the tee. He's 25th so far this that's season huge. in strokes gain off the tee. He's still a good iron player. He's still an excellent putter. Um, and he is um, fifth on our list of, you know, top 10 players on difficult golf courses. So I think Sahith is ready to win. Zell Torres coming off the miscut. cut. I'm not that concerned. It was a bad putting week and a bad around the green week for Zell Torres at players. He still gained strokes on approach, um, 2.3 strokes gained on approach. Of course, he had come fourth at API, second at Genesis, 13th at Farmers in his um, three previous appearances. So I, I still think he's close to a win. And of course, as I always say with Zal Torres, I think the tougher the golf course, um, the better chance he has to win. Yeah, I tell you the truth. I actually would, uh, if I was taking one of the two, I'd take the Gala this week. Uh, he's just really dialed in and playing yeah. as good as he's ever played. And um, and again, like I said, he made a drastic move from his first appearance to his second. Like you said, his last appearance uh, on that Sunday was was a nice, nice round. So. Um, yeah, and, and and I also like the strategy of taking – because I do think there's a big difference once you get through the top four players. I think there's yep. – the, there's the, then there's a, there's a little gap. So you got you got Scheffler, then you got the – Scheffler and Clark, you can go one, two. Then you got Zalatoris and, and Sagala, three, four. But then there's a gap. So I like this, the, uh, the idea of taking Zalatoris and Sagala, mm -hmm. combining them, and just, hey, one of them wins – I'm in good shape because exactly. the odds, I mean, you're getting almost even double than Clark and forget right. about Scheffler. So, yeah. So, um, not, not, not a bad strategy to do that. Um, meanwhile, Finau, you would look Finau just loves playing Mexico and Houston. And, and this is like his part of the country. Um, yeah. but he's a defending champ. So winning back to back, not an easy thing. I don't know. I'm not gonna, The only reason that I wouldn't rule him out is just because he plays well in these types of events. But he didn't really mm -hmm. play well at Mexico, and he's just not having a great year, um, and really hasn't played all that great. Even though he's won a couple of times in the last couple of years, he hasn't really. That's that's really all he's done 
is win those events. He hasn't really done much else than that. Yeah, he finally maybe figured out the putter, too. He's actually gained strokes putting in the last three events, but now the, the hot ball striking has kind of cooled off. He, uh, last week at Valspar was easily it – was, it was the first time all year that he, he lost strokes tee to green, and he, he did so pretty convincingly. So it's like he figured out the putter, but now you know the, the ball striking has kind of cooled off, so he just, he just kind of can't put it all together. Okay, and then you've got Day, who's dropped to 22 to 1. Actually, Day and Kim are on my board. So Jason Day at 22, see what Kim at 30. Uh, Jason, um, I like the fact that he won uh, Byron Nelson last year. Matter of fact, he's won the, the, the Byron Nelson event twice. So he's, he's won in Texas, those two events. He right. was seventh in this event three years ago, 16th last year. He's playing well enough. So I think that Jason, uh, if he's going to have any chance at the majors and to have a really good year, I think it would be nice for him to get one of these types of wins first. And Siwoo Kim uh, made an improvement from missing the cut. His first appearance uh, to 35th, his second appearance, one under par. Nothing great, but uh, he was runner-up at Byron Nelson last year, of course, in Texas. He's trending in the right direction. Sixth place his last uh, go-around and he's made eight cuts this year, all eight cuts, uh, with six top 30s and one top 10 being in his last event. So I think this is a good time to take him. Yeah, Day and Siwoo show up top 10 on both um, strokes gained on difficult courses and strokes gained in Texas. Day's actually third on both of those lists. So D Day and uh, Tagala are the two guys I'm considering for one and done this week. Yeah, that makes sense because I'm same thing with me with Day. I already played the gala, um, but I could definitely see that, uh, and I would I would consider see what Kim as well, because I don't know how many people are going to take him, so I think he's somebody that um, could help you win this week. And there's one other guy on my list that I I might consider, but I probably won't because he's too unpredictable. But that's why see what Kim is someone that if you're ever going to take him and one and done. Why not this week? But could be Jason Day. Okay. So, and then you have now you, you the, the next grouping here. I mean, you, the all four of these next actually Norin, Mitchell, Jaeger, and well, let's just go with those three. They're, they're between thirty-five and forty-five to one, and I think yeah. all three of them are good plays if you want to go in this area here. Because you had Mitchell last week. I mean, we have had like the worst luck with Greg, we I, had multiple uh, third round lead. We've had multiple third round leaders, the two of us, winning by multiple strokes, and we and none of our guys have been able to hold on. You had Mitchell last week with a two stroke lead into the final round, and he it completely plays like crap, which is gone. which yeah. is how our players have been playing when they go into the final round in great positions. They just fall apart on Sunday. Yeah. So, but Mitchell, 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 Mitchell made me want to quit golf betting last week <laughs> through, through three rounds. He had gained like 12 strokes T to green and had lost like two and a half strokes putting. He was putting horribly, but he was still up by two strokes. He could have been up by five or six. That wouldn't have mattered because he played so horrible on Sunday. That was I'm sure Keith Mitchell's a nice guy. That was one of the most pathetic Sunday eight rounds I've ever seen. Like I know the driver was off. That's one thing, but then just iron shots weren't good. Leaving putt short. It was just a, a pretty gutless performance by Mitchell. So like he's playing excellent. That's why I bet him last week. And like, again, the ball striking was still there prior to Sunday at, at Valspar. But after seeing that Sunday performance, I, I cannot bet him to win a golf tournament right now. I hear you. It's uh, it, it, that's the thing that would concern me as well because it's like it's not like he hasn't won before, and he's played pretty well the last couple of years at the early part of the season. But it's like, dude, you're acting like you've never won anything in your life. I mean, that's just, that was awful because that, that 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 was not a coincidence that it was Sunday, and that's just yeah. that that yeah. something all in his head, and he went to pot from the very first swing on on hole number one uh, on Sunday. So that's the thing, because Mitchell has trended well here, including ninth last year. He's got four top 20s in his last five events. But it's hard to take somebody after the way they played on Sunday last uh, just a few days ago. Uh, Norin, it could be interesting, because how about this? He went from a miscut eight over par 
to a fourth place eight under par. That's a 16 stroke difference. First appearance to second. He's made 11 straight cuts on tour. Seven of those are top 30s. Three top 10s, two top fives, runner up. His last two, 19th and nine. And he's on your list. So I think Noren could be an interesting play, even though, um, not even though, but he, he has played better in the fall. But it's surprising that he still has not had a PGA Tour win yet. It's just very surprising. Yeah. Yeah, that, you know, I starred Norin on Fantasy National on Sunday night when I was doing my initial research, kind of hoping to see like a 50 or 60 to 1 on him when the odds came out on Monday morning. But I, th- I think he might have opened at 40. Now he's down to 35. Um, it's just too short yeah. for me for a guy who hasn't won. But he, he is playing well. I think he'll play well. I think he's a good, you know, maybe top 10 bet. I think he's someone to, you know, if you're playing DraftKings to consider playing Alex, Alex Norin. I just, I, I can't get on board. Um, at, at, at 35 to one. Yep. Uh, Jaeger at 45 to one, uh, also made a big deal, uh, move 35th in his first appearance at six over par, the ninth in his second appearance at six mm. under par. He had a 12 stroke difference. So whatever the, I mean, this apparently it seems to be a, cause this has happened a lot here. It seems to be a golf course that, Hey, you know, it almost, it's almost like, yeah, it would be preferable if you played there once, because the second time around could be a big deal. So even if maybe if you see a player that hasn't played all that well in his first appearance at this golf course, don't shy away from taking him because you could see a big move in his second mm-hmm. appearance. But the problem with all of a sudden Jaeger, who had that big run of no, no, no missed cuts and whatever it was, 17 events, whatever. And then as soon as it came to an end, he's now missed three out of his last five cuts. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I wonder maybe it's, Maybe it's just Florida. He didn't like the Florida swing. He did struggle putting in, in his last three. Um, or maybe the hot streak's just over for Stefan Jaeger. So. Yeah, it's not that he can't win because even on the – I think he – I think in his in this run, I think he does have a top ten out of the last five, I believe. Yeah, he finished third, he finished third in Mexico. Oh, top five, yeah. even better. And that was Mexico. So not 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 a bad similarity here. Coming to Texas, so again, Jaeger at forty-five to one. At least he's forty-five to one compared to Norin, who's down right. to thirty-five to one. Uh, all right, so and then let's go now to one of my picks, and that is going to be the next pick on the odds is going to be I'm going I'm going to I'm going to go with Hughes. Um, I just think that uh, he even mentioned it. They even mentioned it in the broadcast because I know I, I had looked at his chart at the end of the year last year and thought, hey, you know what? Uh, he, he's not playing all that poorly. Uh, matter of fact, he had a runner up at RSM in the fall and now he's getting on a nice run and he's even admitted it that he's close to really, you know, getting it. And sure enough, he almost had it. I actually thought he was going to win last week. I thought that he was like, if I had to put a money on a live bet uh, with a couple hours left in, the, in that event last year, when he last week, when he had that one stroke lead, I would have, I would have pet him. I, I just thought he was going to win. He was playing the best at that time. And then he just kind of fell apart late, but mm-hmm. he's got three straight top thirties here, one top 10. So that's good. He likes the golf course. He's trending really well, had a really good showing last week and you're getting 60 to one. So that's yeah. a big difference. So that's why I like him this week. Yeah. I think, I think the number is good for a guy who's playing well and has played well here before. Um, I think with Hughes, you're always kind of hoping the putter carries him, which it did last week. He gained 9.6 strokes putting <laughs> last week, which is pretty absurd. But um, you know, maybe maybe it can stay hot. Maybe he can chip in a few more times, which I know we did. So I, I'm with you. I, when he you know he chipped in on Sunday, he made a super long putt somewhere near the turn, yeah. and I thought um, it was just kind of his day. But he, he fell apart on the back nine. All right. Uh, next up in the odds is your final pick, your long shot, Luke List. And even though Luke does not have um, a big history here, except one top 15, uh, and he hasn't played particularly well in his last three events, uh, this is a a tough golf course, and Luke List does play well uh, at tough golf courses. So why did you like him, though, particularly this week? Oh, Luke List just bumped up to 75 to (laughs) him as we're recording. Look at that. Um, Yeah, I just like him on tougher, long courses. I mean, he won... Torrey Pines in 2022, tough, long course. He was second at Genesis just a few starts back, tough, long golf course. Just look at the last 50 rounds in this field. He's 20th best off the tee, 18th best on approach. He's third best 
in proximity from 200 plus yards, which you're going to get a lot of those longer approach approach shots this week. So it's just the type of course where I think list could kind of pop up and surprise as he almost did again at, at Genesis, uh, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. All right. And then uh, another one of my picks is right there uh, at 70 to one now, even though I got him at 80 to one. And that is Joel Damon. And wow. Joel Damon uh, has played here twice, fifth and ninth. So that's as good as it gets out of anybody that's played here. Uh, his last three events, he's played better because he had a bad run there for a while where he was just awful for almost uh, six months or so. But he's starting to play better. He was 11th at players not too long ago. And maybe the most important reason to take Joel Damon this week is it would be the second – It would be it's the trend of the Gilligan hat. And can – can we get back-to-back Gilligan hat PGA Tour winners? Can we go from Peter Malnati to Joel Damon? And that'll just start a whole new uh, trend for that'd be, uh, young golfers that'd be everywhere. Fitting. That'd be fitting for this season, for sure. <laughs> get back to back You know, I, I'm i glad you mentioned Damon because I hadn't really pulled up his stats. He's playing even better than you might think these last two weeks because he's still putted horribly the last two weeks despite finishing 11th at the players and 49th at Valspar. The off the tee and especially the approach game Gained 5.2 strokes on approach at players. Gained 8.2 strokes on approach at Valspar. That is tied for the best approach event of his entire career. Wow. So his irons are hot. If he can just putt, like, feel the average. Get on a hot streak with the putter. Yeah, if he can yeah. just putt okay and not be a disaster on the greens. I, that's a, I, I like that bet. Well, I don't know what if you have any of that data now, but let's keep in mind, when you finish ninth and fifth on his golf course, I'm assuming maybe that you're putting well here. Maybe? He, yeah, yeah. In uh, 2021, he gained 1.8 strokes putting, and in 2022, he lost half a stroke putting, so basically field average. So, again, if he, if he can do that, and and both times at Houston, he's had awesome approach play. Um, so, again, if he can just if he can putt like he did his first two appearances and stay hot with the irons, I think he could be in the mix. All right, so Joel Damon, keep an eye on him. Uh, also, um, as far as uh, the, the – actually, I think that's just one more pick – uh, let's just double check, make sure. I, yeah, just uh, one more, one more pick. Oh, that's right. I, I didn't carry that over, and that is. Um, pr- I'm pretty sure it's just Novak. Let me just go ahead and. Uh, Back switch. on Novak. Yeah, switch that. No, it's not. That was my last pick because Novak was part of my picks, and then I just, um, I didn't take them. But all of our picks are done. So let's talk about some of the long shots that we. Uh, might consider and that's one of them so definitely i i would I, I would put a buck on novak because he's still playing really well for someone that's getting 100 to 1 i mean he's 180 to 1 to begin the week again and then he drops down to i don't know why they keep putting him at 180 to 1 when he keeps dropping down to 100 in the last few times he's got four top 20s in his last five now and three top 10s so I think Novak in this field, I think Matty Schmidt, go back to him. He still, he still uh, is playing well. He was 17th last week. So he's got mm-hmm. three straight top 30s. And, and Schmidt is 150 to 1. Um, other long shots. Uh, I put uh, a buck each on uh, Dietrich, Hubbard, Bramlett, Yuan, and Ryan Moore. So yeah, those like are Bramlett. my long he's shots. A- so. I like Bramlett. He's a bomber. I think he's had some success here. I looked at um, I looked at two Euros. Ryan Fox, who's on on the screen right here at 100 to one. Again, he just popped as a guy who plays well on tough golf courses. Has one on the the DP tour. Um, Bob, Bobby McIntyre, like I don't know what happened to him. He was on the Ryder Cup team like six months ago. Yeah, <laughs> he he, he hadn't. He you know he's he's interesting because a couple of years ago there was a lot expected of McIntyre and then Mm -hmm. his game just didn't follow he was just okay he just didn't even in Europe when he was playing there last year he didn't do much but I think he had that momentum from the previous year that that's why he made the Ryder Cup team and he did well but and he's got a good game the problem is he hasn't translated that to the golf courses yet but and that's and now he's trying to do it on PGA Tour so he didn't play particularly well in Europe last year, and now he's trying to do it in, in America. I just, that's not a good, you yeah. know, method uh, of success. Yeah. So, but he's talented. Two, um, 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of my thing. Just the talent level for a field like this. I think he was 130 to one last I checked. Two super bombs I looked at. Um, Parker Cootie and one one of the Cootie twins. Um, you know, they're Texas guys. Both hit it a long ways. Parker has been playing a bit better. Um, I just think he's a good fit on this course. You look at you know two of the long courses he's played so far this year 25th at farmers you know at tory pines he was 24th at the mexico open so i think this is the type of course you want parker cootie on and then the other guy was rico hoey rico huey okay uh, another bomber ball striking has been on fire lately the putter is bad maybe he's just a bad putter and that's not going to change but i'm um, just looking at the ball striking numbers he's a long hitter um you know he uh, it was uh, 54th at, at Valspar last week, but again, you know, did make the cut, gained on approach, gained off the tee. Um, he was 250 to one last I checked. So uh, th- those are two of the longer shots I would I would consider. Uh, by the way, Yuan, uh, who finished uh, fifth last week, in his last 14 events, he has four finishes uh, between fourth and sixth. So he's uh, you know he's a couple of uh, shots it. away. That guy chip in, was it three times he chipped in on yeah, Sunday? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Come on. 35th here last year. Why can't I get one of those? Why can't I get someone who chips in three times? Yeah, right. Uh, and by the way, Bramlett, uh, his best PGA Tour finish was at Byron Nelson in 2021 when he finished seventh. And he, and, uh, he went from seven over his first appearance here, five over his second appearance, and six under when he finished ninth last year. So yeah. Bramless at 130 to one ish, and uh, Ryan Moore, uh, Ryan Moore, uh, maybe this is just a little, maybe maybe it's just one week, but if you look at it, he played well in the fall. He had three top 15s and one top five in the fall, and now he's coming off the fifth place finish. So you know Moore's a decent player. It's just after a couple of years, his game has just gone to, to crap. Not sure what happened to him. So he's a Texas guy too, isn't he? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm um, making that up. Pretty sure he's a Texas guy, though. And he was third at the Texas Open in 2019 and runner-up in 2008 at the Byron Nelson. A couple of Texas events. Hubbard was runner-up in this event. The very first appearance he made, 13 on the par. Then he went 50th. I don't know what happened to him when he got disqualified last year, um, but he wasn't playing well anyway. He's not playing mm-hmm. particularly well, but he's made all eight of his cuts this year. So, you know, he's had experience on this golf course before. You know, we've talked about him uh, earlier in the year. You, 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 you took him a few times. Um, yeah. So considering he does have a runner up here um, and he hasn't missed a cut all year, maybe not a, maybe not a totally bad idea. By the way, I also uh, put uh, a buck on KH Lee. And... Let's remember, he went back-to-back in Texas at Byron Nelson. Right. And in his first appearance here, he was six over par. So maybe we're going to get one of those uh, big dramatic shifts uh, from Cage Lee from his first appearance to his second appearance. And his last three go. PGA Tour appearances, he does have a ninth and a fourth. So uh, this might be good timing this week. Maybe, you know, he would a good fantasy play or somebody that if you want to get him in your top ten yeah. – uh, that kind of thing, uh, you might be able to do well with KH Lee this, this week. Yeah, that's where I'm at with all these long shots. Like, I think top, top 10 bets. I know it's been a year of long shots, but I, I still think it's going to be one of those top end players that, that wins this week. And, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it as far as, uh, you know, and, and as far, we've gone through even all the long shots. I'm pretty sure we've covered all of the top contenders. Uh, by the way, Cam Davis just is, isn't really uh, played all that well. Yeah, disappointing. Uh, yeah, he looked like he was ready to turn the corner. I don't, I don't even know what he's doing here. He's he's played here three times. He's combined <laughs> 31 over par. Why would you play this week? Go somewhere else. Um, Aaron Rye may not be a bad idea. He's played here twice. He was 19th, his first appearance, and 7th last year. And Billy Horschel is starting to pick it up again. He has two top 15s in his last three events. He hasn't played here before. So he was in a long uh, in a rut, and now it looks like Horschel might be um, getting yeah. things going again. I 
I'd toss Cameron Champ's name out there too. Just a long hitter, flashed a bit last week. He was you know in the mix for a while there. Um, Wasn't that just, strange? Yeah, he, Cameron yeah, Champ was in the mix at Valspar. It just didn't even make any sense. <laughs> He's just he's just totally unpredictable. He's, I know. He's, look at his results this year. They're all missed cuts, and he throws in a 24th and a 26th. Where really, because in Mexico, he was in the mix for a little bit too. So like he's either going to be in the mix or more likely he's going to miss the cut. But again, th- those aren't bad guys to bet on because we, we don't care if these guys miss the cut. That's the same as a, a second place finish yeah. if we're betting them to win. Maybe he should go to live. You know, you only have to worry about three rounds. So <laughs> there you go. your boy, Alex Smalley. Boy, he would have been a pick this week. Because he was 15th his first appearance, 4th last yep. year. But his game has just completely gone south. He has missed yeah, 7 um, straight cuts. Yeah, I'm just pulling up his numbers. I mean, he has been and continues to be a bad putter. And then his his ball striking just hasn't been good enough to make up for the, the, the poor putting. He has still gained on approach in, in 4 straight events, but just barely. And then the off the tee game has kind of been up and down. So he's... Definitely searching for something now. And again, Smalley has to be unbelievable with his, you know, ball striking because the, the putting is going to be bad. Okay. So you, so you said that next week we are going to get more Kawa. Let me see yeah, who I can... else I see here. Uh, Ludwig's playing next week. Ludwig. Benny On's playing. Uh, of course. It's a good course for Ludwig. Cora Connors. I think he's won that event like twice. That's the, it's the only event he's won. He's won it twice, and that's it. Matt Fitzpatrick, Tommy Fleetwood, and Harris English are playing next week. Ricky Fowler is playing next week. Brian Harmon. Russ, isn't, uh, isn't Rory? Rory's playing next week, right? Uh, I haven't gotten to him yet. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm looking alphabetically. Uh, Harmon, <laughs> Henley, Homa. Boy, a lot of players are playing next week. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's tough because they you, you got to play one of these last three before the Masters, right? You got to play either Valspar here or, or next week. Uh, let's see. Tom Kim is playing next week. Matsuyama. Yep. Rory's playing next week. Morikawa. VJ <laughs> VJ Singh. VJ Singh. Yeah. Adam Scott. Uh, yeah. So nice field uh, the yeah, week before the Masters. Awesome. So this week, eh, awesome. a little bit of a downer. But hey, it doesn't matter as long as we get the W. And you're going to go with Day or Sagala? I believe so. I'm leaning towards Saheth this week. Um, you know, I. Yeah, I'm leaning towards Saheth. I mean, he's someone I, I'd consider using at, at a major or an elevated event because he plays well at tough golf courses. But I think this is a good spot for him. It is a tougher golf course, it's a weak field. Yeah. He's playing well. Yeah, he hasn't. Has he? I don't remember him being in contention in a major before, has he? I don't think so. He was he was in contention at the Masters. Oh, was he? Um, yeah, last year, right? Yeah, his first appearance, he came ninth, I think. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's yeah, again, see. Yeah, but obviously you're not taking him at the Masters, so. Right. Uh, um, yeah, and I'm I'm down to Day, Siwoo Kim, and uh, what was did I have a third? Day and Siwoo Kim. I don't think so. Maybe those are my top. Oh yeah, I, I was now. I, I just can't take Hughes in a one and done. He's too unpredictable. Mm, so yeah. Um, so think so. Yeah. So we're both on the same maybe day, um, and uh, we'll see. But anyway, anybody that had uh, Nick Dunlap, well, actually, he, you you couldn't win Nick Dunlap in a one and done. So no, he, yeah. he's an amateur. Right? That's right. So. so if you've had Peter Malnati. And Jake Knapp, uh, you're, I salute you, and you, you're, you're the winner. But anyway, another week. I'm sure nobody took Malnati, so another week that you can kind of try to pick things up because Cam Young. The leader, I, do you think Cam Young was taken last week? Um, he, he was he was taken. He wasn't high owned. Um, I was going to say that you know the leader. Let's see if I can find Cam Young real quick. The the leader in our one and done. Still only has two wins. He's at you know eleven million. So like, I mean, there's it's still still doable. I had I had Burns last week and he missed like a six footer on uh, eighteen on on Friday to miss the cut. Oh, that sucked. That was yeah, that was and really like Burns. anyone who made the cut, anyone who made the cut last week was kind of alive. It was such a packed leaderboard. Yeah, that was weird. I mean, if you yeah. made the cut, you were what six six strokes back from the lead. Yeah, 
Not Cameron bad. Young was six percent. Cameron Young was six percent owned last week. So not much. Yeah. That that would infuriate me. If I took Cam Young last week and I lost to Peter Malnati, I'd be like, <laughs> You gotta be kidding me, man. Yeah. But that's the way it is. What a year. What a year. It's crazy. And uh, this is the kind of week that you kind of wonder, are we going to have one of those weeks? So, um, But next week should be better. Uh, we'll uh, tip into more of our Masters, pre-Masters talk as well next week. We'll get into a little bit of an idea of what we're looking at because next week is a good week to kind of make those decisions. The odds are going to make some serious changes, of course, once we get into Masters week. And, um, yeah, and then we'll probably talk to Jan at some point between now and then because Jan will be at Augusta National. So we'll try to figure all that. And uh, that's it. So, Jared, appreciate it. Talk to you next week. All right. Good luck. See everybody. Good luck.